Now we are working with functions in relations, also working with domain and range. I've pretty much given you all the key points to this. I'm just going to go over one more thing just to kind of recap everything, put everything all in the same perspective. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to review function notation. I introduced this back when we were trying to graph things just by plotting points. We know that we can switch something from the Y notation to the F of X notation, and it just gives us a better way to notate expressions such as these here. Okay, so I have an example. If F of X is 2X squared minus X plus 2, and if we wanted to find F of negative 7, all we have to do is take this negative 7 and substitute it in for all of our x's in that function that we have there. So that is 2 times negative 7 squared minus a negative 7 plus 2. Now, I suggest that you pause the video to simplify this on your own and also see if you can complete part B. Now, that's a review problem, so you should be able to. Okay, so to simplify this, I take my negative 7 and I square it to give me 49. Here, my double negatives cancel out, so that gives me plus 7. And then just copy down my plus 2. 2 times 49 gives me 98. I can go ahead and add these two numbers back here, plus 9. And so, my final answer here is 107. So, my official answer is f of negative 7 gives me 107. If I choose to graph this, then that would also give me the ordered pair negative 7 and 107. So that's going to help me with the perspective here in my next example. In part B, f of a minus 4, basically again, I just take this a minus 4 and I substitute it in for any place that I see an x. So that gives me 2 times a minus 4 squared minus an a minus 4 plus 2. And notice I substitute my a minus 4s in parentheses in both of these because that means it gets inserted as one unit. So that means I square the whole unit, and that means I subtract the whole unit. And those are things that students miss along the way. So... To square it, I cannot distribute my square. That's a big violation. So what we need to do is we need to FOIL this out, a minus 4. Here, I need to distribute this negative all the way through, and that is, again, important why we have to insert it in with parentheses. So it's a negative a plus 4, carry down my plus 2. When I FOIL this, I get a times a, or a squared. Outside gives me a negative 4a. Inside gives me a negative 4a. So if I were to combine those, that gives me a negative 8a. So I'm kind of skipping a step in my FOIL process. And last, negative 4 times negative 4 gives me positive 16. Copy down my negative a. I can add those two numbers there. That gives me a plus 6. Distribute my 2 through, that gives me 2a squared minus 16a plus 32, just copying down my last two terms, minus a plus 6. Okay, so now I just have to combine my terms. 2a squared and negative 16a minus a gives me a negative 17a, and a 32 plus 6 gives me a 38. So, f of a minus 4 simplifies to be this trinomial there. 2a squared minus 17a plus 38. Okay, that was a review of the function notation. Now let's try and put everything together. How can we fit pretty much everything that we've learned so far into one example? And that is by doing something similar to this here. So we have a graph here on the right, and we have a couple of different things in this graph. So in part A and B, we want to determine f of a value. In part C and D, we want to figure out our x value 
such that our output is 0 and 3. Um, X-intercepts and Y-intercepts, that's a review from before. And domain and range is a review of this section. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with these answers. Okay, examples A through D kind of goes back to what we just did in this first example here. So I inputted my negative 7 into this problem, and that gave me out my output of 107. And I said I could make that into an ordered pair if I want to, where my input or my x value is negative 7. And my output, or my y value, is 107. So that's what I'm going to do here. If my input, or my x value, is 2, I want to figure out what my corresponding y value is. So I figure out where my x value is 2, right here. So I need to figure out what my corresponding y value is. So here's my ordered pair. So my corresponding y value is 5. So that means f of 2 is 5. Same thing for part B. If I want f of negative 5, I figure out where my x value of negative 5 is, and I figure out what my ordered pair is at that. Now, this is kind of a trick question because it looks like I have a point there, but notice this is an open circle, so this is actually an undefined point. So that actually means my y value does not exist. So this is actually undefined. Because there is an open circle, my point is not defined, hence my y value is undefined. For C and D, we do just the opposite. We try and come up with our x value any time we have a specific y value. So in part C, I need to figure out any time my y value is equal to 0. So my y value is equal to 0 here, and my y value is equal to 0 there. So I need to come up with those x values. The first one's pretty easy because it's right on a tick mark. So my first one is when x is equal to negative 4. My next one is a little bit more complicated. We're going to have to guess here. Just come up with your closest guess, and if you come up with something close, then that will be acceptable. So it looks like it's in between 3 and 4. So if I wrote this in decimal notation, maybe something like 3 and 2 thirds or 3 and 3 fourths or something like that. Now, if you did a decimal approximation or an improper fraction, that would be acceptable too. So as a mixed answer of 3 and 2 thirds, that would be okay as an 11 thirds. For part D, I want to figure out when all of my x values are equal to 3. A little bit more complicated because I have a lot of them. I have an x value equal to 3 here, equal to 3 here, and everywhere in between. But I also have an x value equal to 3 there, so I need to answer all of those. So my first is if I wanted to do an interval notation between this value of negative 3 and this value of 1, my endpoints included, so all of my x values between negative 3 and 1. And again, I'm going to have to estimate this one here as well. So that one looks like it should be maybe 2 and 3 fourths. Or as a mixed fraction, I can write that as 11 over 4. And just do your best of estimating if it does not end up on being a whole number or landing exactly on a tick mark. Part E, I want to figure out all x-intercepts. So anywhere I intercept my x-axis. Well, we already did that. That was pretty much the same thing as part C, when my y value was equal to 0. So my same answer except for my notation is different. If I wanted an intercept, I wanted an intercept or ordered pair notation. So my first one would be negative 4, 0. And my second one would be 11 thirds, 0. F, determine the y-intercept. So that is anywhere we intercept the y-axis. For it to be a function, we actually should only have one y-intercept for our 
vertical line test, and we see that our y-intercept is right here. So in ordered pair notation, that is 0, 3. The domain is any x value that we see on the graph. So we see our graph starts on the leftmost here at negative 5. Now, it's an open circle there, so it's actually an open interval there. And our graph goes forever. It handles all of these x values, all of these x values between here and here. And it goes forever on the right. So that means my x values go from negative 5 and beyond, but not including negative 5. So in interval notation, negative 5 to infinity, because our graph continues forever on the right-hand side of the graph. Again, open parenthesis over here because they have an open circle over there. In part H, the range. Range is the acceptable Y value. So since our graph goes down forever, that means our Y value, our lowest Y value goes down forever and up to our highest Y value. We see our highest Y value at this point right here. It is a specific point, so it does include that y value there. So this is my range of my graph. Remember, when you write this in interval notation, it goes from the smallest number, the bottom of the graph here, to be negative infinity, to the largest part of the graph, which is positive 5, which is included. So here, this example has just recapped basically everything we've done with functions, domains, and range. In inputs, outputs, x values, y values, horizontal, vertical, so on and so forth. So this recaps everything that we need to know about functions. And that gives me an excellent place to end this.